Nation here with LJ Thomas, Bull City Pro Class of 2022. What college you going now, just playing? Um, I don't know. I don't know yet. <laughs> hey, so we're gonna uh, we're gonna start at the back and kind of work our way toward the front. So Bull City Prep has a how how long you been at Bull City Prep in North Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina? Right? Um, I've been there for one year since last year. I had moved from I actually was in Atlanta at Columbia, then I moved to um, I went to prep school in North Carolina. How's your prep school experience been? Um, it's been good. It's actually been different. It's a lot of work. What's prep school like? Because, uh, you um, know, it's, people, it's, people hear about prep, they hear about post-grad, they hear about, you know, you know what public school and private school is. What's prep been like? Well, it depends on what type of, what prep school you go to, but the prep school I go to, we on the national schedule. We we wake up, it's pretty much like a college setting. You do your schoolwork in the afternoon, but you still, you still got more time to work on your game, focus on your game, focus on your body versus public school. Okay. So it's really a good opportunity to get better. How was uh, the schoolwork is online? Yeah, schoolwork online. Oh. Yeah, so, yeah, no, nah, it's solid. It's at your own pace, so. But you got to complete it before the end of the school year, but it's at your own pace. Uh, that makes sense. Um, AAU, who you play with AAU? Um, I play with Team Loaded, North Carolina. What, uh, what goes into your decision, you and your family decision on who you play with AAU? I'm sure you have plenty of options. I mean, you're a kid. Like, um, currently, you, you got a, a couple offers from a couple schools, a little bit slick, right? So I'm sure you have people in your ear about, about coming to play for them. Like, yeah. what, what makes you decide to be Adidas? Hey, Adidas, right? Yeah, yeah. Adidas. And uh, what, what makes you, what, what, like, what go into the decision making with that when you highly heralded? Um, it, it was kind of a tough decision, but I think we chose that decision because of what it, what they brought to the table. Like, they brought the work. We had therapy every day for your body. We had um, real college practices. We had college weight room. It was just a lot of stuff you can get better at. Same thing with the Bull City Center. So I think that's what sold us in the other stuff. Go with it. Right. So you uh, if do you are you a exposure over development guy, or do you feel like the development part would be more sport more important than exposure? For 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 by that I mean like um if we assume that the EYBL level is the highest level of exposure but the program the the teams or the organization don't have the same amount of development which would you choose if uh if you had a few less coaches but more development at your baseline um that'll be a tough one because without exposure you can't be seen you can't get anywhere so it's like you developing yourself and you don't have the exposure it's a lot of people out there who who good but they just not exposed they're not in the right situation so i would have to pick exposure because I just develop myself on my own, my dad, because without exposure, you can't be seen, so. You work? Yeah, for sure. Here you go. Why you always this man don't think I work? <laughs> bro, like, you always talking like you in there, like you not even in there. Like, why you sweating right now? You nervous? Nah, I just got done working. What you do? Y'all see this work, What you man. do? Y'all see this real work. This what man you do, man? What's the work, work, then? What you just did, then, since you I just did some work? I had to get on the work. treadmill, the stairs, had to do my conditioning. Then I had to do my little jumps. Vertimax, a little Vertimax work? Mm -hmm. Who told you to do that? Me, it's on my little um, resume, it's on my little schedule. How consistent are you with work? Uh, I work every day, I got a little schedule every day. And what I gotta do, I get in here, do a little bit of conditioning, working. Then I at home, I lift weights with my brother, me and him do weights. Then we come back in the afternoon. When you, uh, when did you get to that? When did you get to where you, cause like, when you come up here in the daytime, it's just you. It's not somebody up here telling you what to do or anything like that. Like, when did you get to the discipline to be able to? Well, work? I started getting to that discipline. That's really what actually kind of transformed my game. Not my dad really pushing me anymore. I got to the point where I pushed myself, and it, I wanted it for me. I wanted to get better for myself. I wanted it for my goals, for my aspirations. When did that happen? I would say tenth grade. That's what. That's when it happened. Tenth grade. And versus me dissecting my game. Nobody know your game like how you know your game. So I feel like that really got me to the next level. But you need a parent there to push you, which my dad, he still pushes me. He still makes sure I'm on top. Shout out to, 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 to big uh to big LJ. But I feel like uh, in order to get to that that over the hill, you gotta be able to push yourself because you know your game. Alright. How was uh Columbia? You came up here to Columbia from from Florida? Yeah. 
How was uh, how was that as a situation? Well, Columbia was a real good experience. You know, you got Coach McCray, good good coach, crazy coach, legend, legend, crazy Shout coach. Out to He's field. a tough coach, but that was my guy for sure. You learn uh, you learn that uh, that that uh, matchup two three. Two three matchup. <laughs> it's coming. Matchup two three. It is coming. We used to coming. work on that two three matchup for the whole year. Coach you, McCray, crazy. You was on the top or the bottom? I was on the top. You was on the top. Mm -hmm. You was on the top where the ball was coming. You was on the other side where you, the dude ain't playing as much defense. Oh, I forgot. I, was, <laughs> I, I think we switched it up because it was a whole bunch of stuff we had to do. Boy, he had that thing figured out, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Oh my God. He did. I think uh, I think coaching in high school, uh, the spots we've been at, the teams that we always struggled against the most was teams that ran matchups and threes. You know what I'm saying? They just don't leave a lot of holes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he's like a man but his own. Right, right. It's always somebody there. So, you know, like your screen and roll stuff kind of go away. It's just it's always yeah. creative. If you problems. can't shoot, then it's hard. If your team can't shoot. Right. And we in an area that don't breathe shoot. This is not Indiana, all right? Guys is trying to get to the rim. <laughs> it's not happening against the matchup 2-3. <laughs> hey, uh, you originally from where? I'm originally from Florida, but I've been in Atlanta for like two years. Best basketball, Florida, Georgia, North Carolina. Um, that's hard to say. I would definitely. Nah, it's not that hard to say. Go ahead and say what you want to say. I would definitely give it to. Uh, uh, it's an iffy, iffy between Atlanta and North Carolina because Atlanta got some tough people. But yeah. North Carolina got tough people too. So. What's going on in Florida? What part of Florida are you from? Tampa. <laughs> get better, get better down there in Tampa, Florida. You're losing your players. <laughs> got to be tougher down there. In Tampa. It's more football. It's football. Yeah, I, I actually started playing football. I don't know what made me chose basketball, but I actually, me and my brother, we started playing football. Yeah, we the bro football. still play football. Mm -hmm. Well, he going back and forth. He haven't made his mind up yet. That's the same thing I went through. I got you. He was just playing. He just was out there playing basketball. Then he came down here to play football. And he wanted to pick, so he hasn't really picked yet because he's still young. So he's going through the same thing I went through. But I feel like you eventually got to pick one because – it got to be your focus. You got to focus on one. Because it's you. different techniques, it's different movements, and a lot of stuff that go into it. When do you have to pick one? Like, when, like you feel like you picked at the right time? You feel like you should have chosen earlier? Like, what, what you I think? I feel like I picked at the right time. Right when did before, you pick? Like, ninth grade year. Ninth grade year, I had to pick basketball and football, and I had chose basketball. Well, I didn't really choose it. It just, I went from, like, playing, then I had to go play again. I went from playing high school, then I had to go right into AAU, so I really didn't have time for football, so that's when I had to make the decision, like, okay, I'm gonna have to play basketball again. You was a dog on the field? Around. For sure, for sure. What position you played? I played running back and strong safety. You kidding? Oh, for sure. You might hit right now. For you sure. might come crossing the middle. Sure. Don't cross the middle. <laughs> that's all we trying to tell you, don't cross, for sure. don't cross the middle. Hands are active. Um, what, um, if someone is, wants to see you play completely unfamiliar with your game, um, what comparisons do you hear to your style of play? I say Chris Paul, Kimber Walker. I hear Chris Paul, Kimber Walker, and then Darren, Darren Williams a lot. Darren Williams, the big crossover. Uh -huh, just because oh. he handled the ball, yeah. Yeah, yeah. A lot yeah. of people say that. You ain't lying, because he was not really in his bag a lot, but he was dropping people with the big crossover and the hesitation. Uh -huh, that had, that's what I kind of put out of. So I would say him, a lot of people say him. Who is your guys like? Who who do you look at like? Um, like if if like who is your favorite basketball player? Who do you kind of study? Do you study the same people they say that you look like, or is like the guys that you like not even like your style of play? Yeah, I definitely study Darren Williams. I study Chris Paul a lot. I study Kyrie Irving a lot. I study. I just study a lot because it's all about what your like what your brain can pick up, what new things can your brain do. Because when you're on the court, you're really not thinking. It's really just like you got to play off instinct. So I like to put a lot of information in my head, just watch a lot of players, watch Curry, just watch a lot of players. When you when you watch and when you say study and watch, like be be a little more like in-depth about what you mean by that. Like I don't want you to just be watching highlights. Like is there certain stuff that you – Well, it, it depends on what I'm watching for. If I'm going to watch a game, I'm going to watch for the decision-making. But then I also watch highlights for the movements, the moves they do. I study that and I put it in slow motion a lot of the time just so I can process it for um, highlights, like especially Kyrie Irving, his handle. And I feel like that that's what really got my handle good, I feel like, just watching that over and over and over and over and over again. I feel like that's 
what had got my angles good. You know, you, I, I agree with that in, in, in taking information like that because it's really just, it's really like a real small nuances that guys have in their package that yeah, make them different. That make them different. Because at the end of the day, Kyrie is doing in and outs, mm -hmm. going between his leg, going behind his back, snap some wraps, he's spinning. And we all capable of doing that. Mm -hmm. But why does his work in what situations? Like what other movements does he have? What is he doing with his shoulders? Or is it something yeah. with his eyes and yeah. stuff like that? You know what I'm saying? Small, is it something small and jerky? Like that, yeah. You know, a lot of guys miss on that. You know, they do they do the dribble moves, but the implementation, they miss something because they don't understand it's a nuance in there that yeah. make this actually this is what the, the shift is. It's not the dribble move. It was when he was hanging, it was him getting explosive into a, a move he didn't ah, use. Yeah, exactly, yeah. before he got to his Just keep stuff like that. Off guard. Worst game you can remember playing? The worst game I can remember? Um, What's a game when you feel like you let him down? You let you let him down. You just didn't. It just, I don't know. It just ain't hit. I played one game where I, I, I was just missing shots, but that's because I had both my hands over. You always got excuses. I, my hand was broken. When and you I start played, having excuses. I played with a glove on. So. <laughs> So that was a that was a bad glove. game. No, like a, a copper fit glove because I had to play. It was actually during this live period I had to play with a copper fit glove. For Did a it help? Games. Yeah, it helped keep my hand intact because my hand was hurting. Uh, See that? Should have helped your coach sub you out. No, nah, he wasn't. Bro, what is that? That's because I broke my hand. What goofy ass shit did you do to break your hand? I ain't even gonna tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Not on camera. <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't basketball related. It was a it was a freak accident. Mm -hmm. It wasn't expected. Nah, it wasn't expected. Oh uh, yeah. Well, I hope. Shout out to your hands. Hopefully they get better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Shout out to the hands. Good hands out yeah. here in these streets. Uh, best game you remember having this last last live period? Who who was the victim? Who didn't know that it was coming? Who thought it was sweet and then you got the whole thing? Who was it? I would say game versus. I forgot the team name. I was just kidding. I was just in the zone. I was just in the, in the group. Right? Like, like, you are lucky he forgot your name because we was going to tag you. <laughs> 29 piece. <laughs> 29 piece. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That was live? That was in the live period? Or that was yeah, just it was in the, the live period. It was in the live period. Okay. Who was a, who was a tough cover? Who do you get out here and you you strapping up against them? They in the other warm-up line. You already know they're going to bring it. Like, you're going to have to sit down and you're going to have to sit, sit today. I mean, in the hoop state, it, it's a lot of it's a lot of good players. You, you know, you heard of hoop state, or like the little um, league we play in. You got, you know, Rob Dillingham. You got. I've him. heard of Rob with the shifts. Yeah, yeah shout out got, to Rob with got the shifts. Him. You got, you got Mikey Williams who played good for them. Thank you. What's your name? You got Green. Yeah, he's tough. He's tough. You got, um, you got Trey Greenwood. He just transferred out. You got Jaden Elks. You got a lot of people in the North Carolina area that you can go head to head against. So. I know they're gonna bring it. I know I'm gonna bring it. And everybody wanna be the best. Got to be. They're trying to take your spot. Yeah, they're trying to take my head. Well, Rob and them younger. <laughs> they younger, but the people in my, yeah, we my class. Yeah, we started with Game Elite some this summertime. Yeah, they younger, so. But Rob, he, he number one in the 2023 class. Don't make me. Don't make us come down to twenty twenty three, bro. Don't make us come down there, bro. We'll come yeah, down there, bro. North Carolina in twenty twenty three. We'll come to North Carolina and the twenty twenty three. They, they got me number one in 2022. So. In North Carolina? Mm -hmm. That's why you left, because you knew it was too much smoke down here. It was sweet up there. You had to go up there and take nah, a little easy. Nah. That's not how it happened. Don't let this fool you neither. Shout out to Eastern Michigan. Uh, my boy Paul Jackson just signed his first deal overseas in Macedonia. I'm from Georgia, though. It's yeah, just, it's just a dry fish shirt. Um, so, uh, what, are that? what was, what was that? The, the who's good? Yeah. Um, uh, your best basketball memory. My best basketball memory. Yeah, it was when really young, young days, young days. I still remember our crowd. We used to, I used to play with this team called Lakes and Fire. Our crowd was crazy. Like our crowd was crazy. Yeah, crazy had loud. The football parents. It was crazy loud. They, they, the whole city used to come out and watch, watch us play Lakes and Fire. Gym used to be crazy. Everybody screaming, yelling. Then we had this certain clap when we got on defense. What the clap was like? That's all you hear the whole the whole jump. Then don't let us get a turnover, boy. It went crazy like that was just crazy, and they still do that to this day. It's crazy for real. That's like it's like the whole city come watch the Lakers fire play. That's dope. That's dope. 
who else was on that squad? Was it anybody else young with you then that's, 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 that's out here some that's getting to the, it? Nah, some of them went to play football. A couple of them, I think, might be going, um, they doing solid, I guess. Yeah, they doing solid. I ain't really keep up with them too much. I know a couple of them. But, yeah, they doing solid. Good old Lakeland Fire. Shout out to Lakeland Fire. Yes, Who was the best team when you were uh, when you were what what age? Best team. Like, who was the best team when you we were little like that? We were the number like one that? team in the state. That's what I'm saying. We was the number yeah, one was team in the state. Yeah, we was the dude. We was the number one team in the state. <laughs> this is class of 2022. There's somebody out here that's from Florida that don't feel what you're saying right now. They feel like they, that y'all was just dodging them when y'all were younger. Nah, this nah. is like like ten and under. Or Everybody like that. knew about the Lakeland Fire. We wanted all smoke. It's all like ten U. It's like eleven U. It's like twelve U. Fourth grade. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's that that's that team. You, that's that. Y'all didn't see them teams. Y'all didn't see them guys in Miami. It was somebody in Miami. That oh, felt for like sure. Like nah, that. we went to Miami. We had Miami City Ballers. Got rid of them. You had, um, you had, uh, Robert Sharks. You got, had got got rid of y'all. You had a lot of teams. You had Wellington Wolves. Y'all didn't want to see had, us. You had what was that team called? Uh, Shooting Stars. You had a lot got, of tough teams. Shot y'all out of there. Um, what do you do away from the court, bro? Because you, you you got all this discipline. You uh, we over here at Momentum in Decatur right now. Uh, you get here in the morning. I see you here in the evening. You say you lifting when you at the crib. You doing your you you're sitting down in front of the, the screen, son, doing some film study. Like what what you doing when you away from the gym, man? Like how, what's your leisure? Um, like? If I'm a chill, I'm a chill. I'm gonna watch movies. I may go out. I may go out with my girl sometime. Shout out to our ladies. Yeah, my wife just called me a couple minutes ago. Hey, baby. <laughs> yeah, and I watch movies. Like, if I feel like I need to step away, I definitely watch movies. That's what a lot of people say. Good. Sometimes it's good to step away. Yeah, you got to you 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 balance, balance it all. You got to balance it all. You got to balance it all. Um, What, uh, oh, yeah, I got a good one. Um, first offer you got? My first offer was Mississippi State. That's pretty big. Yeah. When was that? How long ago was that? That was like last year. So, tell me the difference between um, <laughs> thinking I'm getting offers and actually getting offers. Like, what does that feel like? Like, you know, before that, I'm sure you was doing your thing. And I don't know if you had interaction. I don't know if you talked to Mississippi State or if they talked to a coach and they told you, like, what was that first offer? What did that feel like? And you know, what did you think it was going to be like before you got any offers? What did you think it was going to be like? Before I thought, I, I just, before I was like, it would feel good. Like, it just feel good to get an offer. You know how I go. But then when I got that offer, it definitely felt good. But it was still, it's, it's, you still got to keep working. You still got to keep grinding. But when you get that first offer, it just feel good. It just feel good, especially from a SEC. It's just a, another big opportunity for your little process. Everybody got their own process, so it's a big opportunity. It's not too many people; only one percent of people go to college for sports, so that's 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 big. So it, it felt real good. I always uh, tell people when um, when you get into that situation that that uh, you start to get offers, or even if it's just conversations, if it's interest, you always got to remember that you're getting it's a coach at a school with a shirt on. And you probably know this, like I know this for sure, that coaches move around to a lot of different schools. Yeah. So you yep. get an offer from a person. You get an offer from a guy that's at a school your sophomore year. If he that coach is to have it somewhere else, mm -hmm. the new dudes is there probably don't even know you. <laughs> they don't know you at all. So for you yep. to be out here saying that, yeah, I still got an offer from Kansas State, but the whole Kansas State staff is over at Cal right now. Like them dudes that's at Kansas State, unless they called you and said, "Hey, we we seen you play and we like you," like you got an offer from that coach. Yeah, you so, get an offer from the coach, not not the school. You get an offer from the coach. right, right. So you always want to work. A lot to, of that uh, that happens. Yeah, just just make sure that don't big time folks. It's just like right now, you know, he talked about his first offer was from Mississippi State. Like if his next offer was from. Uh, we not we will we'll call somebody else if he got an offer from Cal Fullerton, and it's just not really on his radar. But you know, at the end of this year, at the end of this basketball season, the Cal Fullerton coach became the next coach at Florida State. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely. <laughs> and, but important. he already big timed him because it's like, yeah, you know, I already got like ten SEC offers, so I'm probably you know nah, like it's Cal State is cool, but. 
with yeah. everybody. Just like he said, you never know what can happen. It, it happens a lot. So it's important to build a relationship with all coaches who want you. Yes, sir. Uh, what uh, what if you could tell if you could tell ninth grade LJ something to have him to have right now LJ further along in his development? What would you tell him? And we we gonna say this. He's saying this to ninth grade himself, but this goes to all you other kids that's coming up through the ranks. Like, give yourself some insight so you can make sure that you are not slacking when it's time or whatever it is. If it's academic, if it's socially, if it's uh, athletically. Like, what kind of information would you give them? We're going to wrap up with that. I would give myself this information. I'd be like, definitely you need to lock in, get your grades. Well, I always got my grades anyway because you can't really play if you don't have your grades. So get your grades. Just continue to work. Just keep working. Everything will work itself out. Just keep working. Keep building your confidence. Keep working on your game. Just keep being, just keep being you. That was terrible advice. <laughs> <laughs> it's good enough advice for me. Yeah, that was good enough for ninth grade LJ. Ninth grade LJ was on his way, right? No, I would. And then I would have said, "What about? How about this? What about you tell one of LJ teammates that's not really getting in there like that, man? Like, come on, man, give me some. Inspire somebody, bro." Oh, you want me to inspire them? Yeah, man. Get somebody together one time, man. They over here, they kind of got it, but they not working like that for real, bro. Man, you just got to get in the gym. You got to work. You got to work. You got to work. I would I would tell myself to keep working. You got to be you got to be motivated on your own because if somebody want to motivate you, your parents there to motivate you, but if they have to keep on motivating you by the time you get to ninth, 10th grade, then you don't really want it. You got to be self-motivated. I would tell myself to get self-motivated because I got self-motivated 10th grade year. I wasn't really self-motivated 9th grade year. My dad made me go out and do it. But that's what I would say to myself. Like, make sure you get, you got to be self-motivated if you really want it. Like, do you really want it? That's what you got to ask yourself. Do you really want it? Because it's going to be a lot of ups and downs. It's going to be a lot of ups and downs mentally, physically. You're going to have bad games. You're going to have good games. It's just important to stay level headed because if you get too high and you fall you're gonna be so low so you gotta just go through them processes i done been there i done been low and i done been high but now i'm to the point where i'm kind of even kill no matter what if i have a bad game have a good game i'm even kill because it's just be like that it's just a part of the whole process in general what, what you uh <laughs> could you name a time where you felt like you had a big head where you probably got away from the work the way the work was supposed to be can you name a time like that um, I never really got away from the work, but I definitely had the big head. Like, like couldn't nobody tell me nothing. I had the big head, definitely. You know, I thought I was this. I thought I was that. Then I had a bad game. Then, then you go to doubting yourself, which all that comes apart. Everybody doubt themselves. Everybody do that. But you just got to be even kill. You got to be even head because the biggest barrier for me, it wasn't even the physical work. I feel like the biggest barrier is the mental, the mental side because. You, everybody working these days, like everybody's getting in the gym, everybody working. I think what puts people over the edge besides what they're born with, like what they're gifted with is your mental. Because the mental approach is so big. I, I've learned a lot definitely from the mental approach. That's dope. And it's important to meditate. Especially when you start getting high level games, playing high level, becoming a high level player. It's important to meditate. That's what I feel. It's definitely important to meditate. I actually meditate every night for about 10, 15 minutes just to keep my mind right. And that, I think that's what really helped me a lot too. What's your meditation, meditation like? What's your meditation like? Um, I got this app called Headspace, which they connected with the NBA. They, they, they had an NBA special package. It teach you how to approach your training. It teach you how to approach confidence. It teach you how to approach basketball. It teach you What's your approach when you're about to play? What's your approach after the game? What's your recovery approach? And it's just big because cause before then I didn't know like I was approaching approaching some of the stuff differently. But when I started doing that, I started playing better. I started feeling better. It was just a lot that went into it. So I feel like that's that's really big. Shout if, out to Headspace. That's just as important. Like, if not more important than what you do physically. Uh, how long? How how tough is it to be uh, light skinned out here and be dragging people? Oh, uh, I'm not sure because I'm not light skinned. I'm not I mean, brown skin. <laughs> you definitely just came out of the sunlight, bro. We sitting next to each other. Yo, see, is he light skinned? Bro, look, I'm man. Brown skin. <laughs> I don't know. Bro. I don't know how. I feel Where you at? Pull, pull, pull. Get to your shoulder. 
Look, you you way lighter than me. Bro, I know I'm light skinned though. You just denied it, so you no, feel like that's not light. No, I'm brown, bro. Bro, you, you light, 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 bro. Skin, right? All right, wait till wait till November. Wait till November. We gonna see oh, how brown you. When the cold come out. Yeah, when it ain't no more heat. I might heat. be light skinned in the cold. Bro, you, I'm brown, you light skinned. Bro. You either light skinned or you not light skinned, bro. I'm not light skinned, bro. You are, and I'm we and we happy to have you to be a part of the community. Shout out to lightskin.com. I wonder if that's a website. I mean, shout out to them too. You know, we not that. But shout out to y'all, man. Y'all doing a good job out here. I'm a big fan of females. Cut that out. But yeah. But um, yeah. So that was uh that's LJ Thomas, man, Bull yes, City sir. Prep, Appreciate North Carolina, you, Charlotte. Um, shout out to to my Bulls. Uh, how, how we how we do it? Bull City Prep. Bull City Prep. Yes, All right, sir. I don't know nothing about that. I'm a Georgia dog boy. All right. All right, you only been there for a year. You dog. We still dogs. Everybody knows we dogs. All right, man. But um, good luck to you two. You want to talk about the OT? Oh, the OT? You want to talk about them? Um, it don't really matter. Yeah. So uh, let me uh, let me ask you. So you had an opportunity to go to a couple workouts for the up-and-coming OTE League. What is, uh, what's that opportunity look like? What is, it, what is that situation like? The situation is definitely high level. You got high level players. You got high level people. You got a whole. It's a, it's a lot of money into it. It's a lot of people into it. It's just like it's almost like NBA. You just on a big schedule. You got to do this. You got to do that. You got to do this. Then they teach you headspace. Just like I said, that's what they teach you. A lot of people really get into the mental health stuff. I mean, you see it over everywhere. Now I wasn't really like that back then. It definitely wasn't like, like that everywhere. Back then. Everybody always promoting it. NBA. Everybody, which that's really important. It's just, it's just when you go to OTE, they just teach you how to become a pro, how to be a pro, how to be on time, which you're going to get the same thing in college, but you getting paid. Well, you getting paid in college, too, for your... Bro, let me like ask you that time. real quick, man. So you got a chance. Like, does that, does the opportunity to potentially get paid as a college athlete play into your school decision making, and does it... Do, do you? I mean, I, you're not there yet, so I mean, you. I'm sure you wouldn't even know how it goes to to be able to get the check. But like, does it does it kind of come into the decision? I got a better question. I got a better question. Are is that a part of a coach's recruitment now? Since that's something that's available, do Most they make mention of that are, now? Yeah, they all mention that. They all mention how they had the best NIL deals and all that, but. It's really just a extra for me. For me, I just want to be in the right situation, go somewhere where I can be myself, somewhere I can produce, somewhere I can play. That's really what I'm I'm looking for. That's crazy. Recruitment yeah. gonna be so different. It's so different uh, just they, because they you just said that right that. now. It's like you know what I'm saying. Like I've been helping folks with recruitment for almost ten years, and I just feel like it's important to go somewhere where where you need it, where you that guy. Because if I mean, you're going to have to always go in there and compete and stuff like that, but you just want to go somewhere where you can be yourself. Bro, go where you are needed. Stop trying to chase levels. Your level <laughs> is going to come and recruit you, and it's going to be a bunch of them. And if they want you, your experience while you're there is going to be incredible. Incredibly different. If you go there, if you if somebody will take you, if you've been getting recruited by a bunch of mid-major schools and you just shoot up, uh, you get a high major school that jump in late, and they bring you in. The coaching staff is, in, you know, possibly in bad shape. They might be, you know, scrabbling to find the last couple places people to fill a roster, and you one of them last guys. Like the opportunity you have is going to be so different from that other school that wants to put you in there and have you playing minutes right away. Like I don't get, I don't know what y'all be thinking. Like the 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 clothes that y'all get or something like that. Like is it? I don't know what it. Is. I don't know what it is. I don't get it. I mean, you know, everybody want to go out. I mean, it's just a lot of opportunity. But you're right. Damn, go somewhere bro. where go somewhere where you want to play where you're needed. Because bro. if you're not needed, you're gonna be miserable. You gonna be in the transfer? I mean, Listen, man. Guys, oh, in the transfer portal, bro. It's That's people in the transfer the portal race. right now. Yeah, they don't got nowhere to go. It's seven hundred people in the transfer no portal right go. now. School started last week, and they got nowhere to go. Now, everybody disgruntled because it's it's a lot of the bad decision making on the front end, man. Yeah. Like the schools, you got you you've had options. It wasn't like you just had the one option and you went there and it didn't work out. You had decisions and you tried to go to whatever the biggest situation was, and it didn't pan out. And then the COVID year happened, <laughs> and it was 1,400 people in the transfer portal. And then everybody get an extra year in college. And somebody else was playing at that spot that you should have went to, and they over there loving it. Mm -hmm. 
telling you, man, ain't nothing like playing basketball. Like, it's cool to be on the team and cool to be associated with the program, but ain't nothing like playing. Ain't nothing like playing. Ain't nothing like playing. Ain't, you feel me? So, we're going to wrap up on that, though, man. Again, this is LJ Thomas. Yes, sir. Bull yes, City sir. Prep, one of the top players in North Carolina. The top player says somebody. Whoever, who, whoever said it. Shout out to whoever said it. Who was it? Get Me Recruited or something. Who else in North Carolina? Uh, Prep Hoops, North Carolina. You got, um, Got um, Phenom Hoops. Shout out to Phenom Hoops. Big Shot. Shout out to Big Shots. What 24 7 Yeah, so that was smooth, man. So I appreciate your time, man. Good luck. Keep working. We're going to get in the lab a little bit, too. It might be a little bit of video of that. Man, like, I did everything. I'm the only one that's been training LJ his whole life. <laughs> I, that's what I do. You know what I'm saying? So if he's any good, for sure, you're for welcome. Sure. That's for what sure. I do. All right. Hoop Nation Heart, LJ Thomas. Oh,